Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the devotional series, series Getting Radical with the Word. Uh, I'm Lewis Peacock. My wife is uh, joining me this morning, Betty Peacock. Yes. And uh, we'll be going through uh, chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians this morning, and uh, I'll be reading as I go through it uh, from the New King James translation. And uh, we're using the acronym SPACE. For those of you who maybe have not joined us before, and that is the S is for a sin confessed, P is there a promise to claim, A is there an attitude to adjust or change, and C is there a command to obey, and E is there an example to follow. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to comment, and we're trying to extract from this particular chapter uh, those, uh, those thoughts, if you want to comment, you can in the chat box, and we will share it with everyone. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you have uh, woke us up this morning and that you are allowing us to start what we regard as a new work week, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you have kept in, uh, those who are hearing and their families safe from this virus that's spreading through our nation and communities and even the world, Lord. But Lord, while we can't see it, you can. We thank you now, Lord, and we ask that you would uh, open your word to us and open our minds that we might receive it. In Christ's name we pray. Um, now also, uh, I want to remind you before I forget it, that if you want to participate, uh, you can uh, see Pastor O'Geese uh, uh, information up in the up in the chat uh, uh, corner and so please contact him and uh, we like to have uh, different ones uh, participating and so he will certainly uh, schedule you in and tell you what uh, chapter and all that you would be reading and and pastor O'Gee's number is 615-267-8690 again that's 615-267-8690 if you're willing to read. Thank you. So uh, let us look at God's word. Chapter 11 in, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. So, so we begin by as Paul says, and I, I say Paul, but it really is the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul. He says, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the, tra the traditions as I have delivered them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of every woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head uncovered, dishonors his head. Having his head covered. Having his head covered, I'm <laughs> sorry. And my, like I said, my wife is like the Holy Spirit. She's leading and guiding me here. But having his head covered dishonors his head, verse 5. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her be covered, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and the glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. For a man is not from woman, but woman from man. Verse 9. Nor was a man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority over her head because of the angels. Verse 11. Nevertheless, Neither is a man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man and the Lord. For as a woman was from man, even so the man also is through the woman, but all things are from God. Judge among yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not even the nature itself teach you that if a woman has long hair, Amen. I'm Sorry, if the man has long hair, the Holy Spirit again is correcting me here, uh, is a dishonor to, the, to him. But if a woman has long hair, 
is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. Verse 17. Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must be also, there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. Verse 22, what do, you, what do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Verse 23, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, for this, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood of the body and blood of the Lord. But let each man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse 29, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Verse 32, but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned, but with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together, eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Hmm. So praise, this, God. praise God's word. Okay, we have several comments here uh, uh, from uh, uh, pa Pastor O'Geist. Uh, he says in verse, uh, I have to get up close to see with my eyes, they're not as good as they should be. He says, he says an example to follow Christ. And from Pastor, he says, that's in verse one. Father in verse one is to follow Christ. Yes. And uh, from uh, Pastor Fordham in verse 18, he says, uh, sin to confess divisions among us. And that is so important. I, I've often thought that's one of the church's biggest problems uh, as we, uh, we tend to sometimes lend ourselves to gossip without even thinking because it comes so natural to us. Hmm. My Lord. And, uh, and uh, I uh, looked at it as a promise to claim uh, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And I think this is the Lord's way of, uh, and that's in verse 31. And I think this is the Lord's way of saying, if we think before we open our mouths, we probably won't gossip against our brother. Um, also, um, uh, a, command, uh, a command to obey, I felt in verse 29, he says, do not take the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. And that unworthy manner is, is explained um, in, in uh, verse 29, and that is not discerning the Lord's body. Uh, I know so many times we tend to want to think about our sins, but I think uh, what Paul is saying here, your sins are covered, and they're covered in the work that the Lord did on the cross. So, uh, 
but we need, when we take the cup, we need to be discerning what the Lord has done in order to uh, save us from those sins and not necessarily our sins itself. Um, let's see. Nice. Also, um, also E, it says, is there an example to follow? And I think that's already been said though. And mm -hmm. um, we follow Paul, as he said in verse one, as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also, you know, uh, the same in the P is a promise to claim. It's again, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. Verse, verse 31. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. And, Nikki. and Nikki in verse three, an example to follow. The head of every man is Christ. Amen. Absolutely. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Fordham in verse uh, 26, a promise to claim when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we show, you show the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Yes, amen. And that's that's the promise we all really wait on. Amen. Praise God. We should think about every day of our life. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And I, um, you know, I think about, it's even in the previous uh, chapter, I've often thought it should be chapter 10, verses 16 and uh, 17 should should be over in this particular chapter itself about uh, taking the cup of blessing, which it which uh, is uh, is this not the communion of the blood of Christ? And we should think about how personal it really is when we take this communion and take the cup of the Lord that we're sharing in His uh, in His crucifixion, His shedding of His blood, and and giving of His body for our sins. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's no, no other comments. I don't think we have any other comments. Um, oh, here we go. Let's Nikki. see. Nikki again. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 is example to follow. A woman was made for a man. Mm. Uh, and I, I hope Betty read. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I've got the sweetest wife in the world. But, uh, and, uh, she, has, she doesn't need any authority on that. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, oh, praise God. Amen. 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 So and from, um, Everybody's laughing. Yeah. I, <laughs> that. I have to get up close to see these chests. They're very small over there. And uh, with my 80-year-old uh, eyes, they, uh, they get a little weak sometimes. Pastor Ogis says, verse 23, example to follow. And, uh, example to follow. God gives revelation to all of us, mm. amen, as he gave to Paul. And like I said, it's, all, it's like uh, Paul was sitting right there uh, when, when this took place. But remember, he was trying to kill all those Christians. Mm -hmm. And uh, verse 27 uh, from Pat, mm -hmm. it says, uh, an attitude to just is how we come to worship our attitude and spirit. Amen. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, we should search ourselves to make sure. Yep. Amen. Well, so is that. Oh, okay. Miss Amma. Okay. Miss Amma says uh, verse six, the women need to wear something over, over our, our heads, heads when, when we, we pray. pray. That's question. Well, I, our I hair don't, is our covering. Yes. Your hair is your covering, but uh, I've always thought about what Paul's Paul in verse 16 says, he says, but if anyone is contentious about these things, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. A lot of controversy over that, but I think what Paul is saying to us, don't get, don't get hung up over these things. You know, these are small things and uh, we need to do things decently and in order as we read all of Paul's epistles. And uh, what we need to focus on is what the Lord has done from us for us in this particular chapter, and that is he gave his life mm. to purge us from sins if we will trust what he's done mm -hmm. instead of trying to prove what we are trying to do. Yes. And so that's the way I tend to look at uh, mm -hmm. this volume of scripture here. Yes, and when I was going through this chapter um, and I was reading a commentary, one of the things they said was that in this time, the um, they talked about the women having a covering because of the paganism that was going on um, 
Can you yes. explain that a little bit? Well, yeah, you had the Temple of Diana right there, uh, you know, visible from Carnith and uh, and you had these priestess who Shaved had their, their heads head shaven mm -hmm. and they were all mixed in and being part of the church and especially, you know, from the Gentile church. Mm -hmm. I see we have a uh, comment from uh, Barbara Robinson. And, uh, we have to remember Barbara's always looking over our shoulder. <laughs> this is the example to follow. Verse 28 uh, says, let a man examine himself it's personal. a personal relationship. Amen. It is Thank a personal you. relationship. Praise God. Praise God. And Andrew says, thanks for the peacock. <laughs> well, uh, any other comments? If we don't have any other comments, then again, I thank everyone for participating. And remember again, if you would uh, like to uh, read a chapter and discuss it, uh, you'll, you'll be given plenty of support and example. Uh, uh, and, and how to follow from uh, from uh, from Pastor O'Geese, and he says uh, from Pastor Fordham uh, to everyone. Oh yeah, are you willing to read? Yeah, even the Holy Spirit makes a mistake sometimes. You see there, are you willing to read uh, one morning? Please contact Pastor O'Geese uh, at 615-267-8690. Amen. And uh, we thank you for participating this morning. And so, uh, again, let us. Uh, oh, one more. Okay, we have another one. It says uh, from from Pat Gaines. Mm -hmm. It says. Uh, verse to, 21. Verse 21. And sin to confess. It says temperance, not, not coming, coming drunk. drunk. <laughs> Amen. Uh, yes. Uh, Praise um, God. Amen, Pat. Absolutely. Wow. I think that's it. Okay, I think that's it. I thank everyone for your comments this Amen. morning and Amen. your participation. Those were really some good, uh, good Observation. uh, observations from this particular scripture. And I think this, using this acronym to read, lets us read with a purpose. And mm -hmm. so I think it really uh, lets us dig into the scriptures. Mm -hmm deeper as we just read them and they're not just words we're looking for what's in these words yes. and so uh, i amen. find it's very helpful amen. amen so again let us uh thank you all and let us close in prayer Praise God. our father and our god we thank you that uh you have shared your word with us this morning lord mm -hmm. and thought and indeed and lord we just ask that you would seal this word in our heart, in our heart. that uh the enemy might not come and take it away, Lord, as we uh, are confronted with all the trials and and all that we go through in life, Lord, as we mm -hmm. get focused on the world and, uh, and tend to forget about you. My Lord. And let us remember that that's the enemy doing this, Lord. Mm -hmm. But as we see this happening, Lord, I pray that you will allow us to refocus our lives and refocus our lives centered on you mm -hmm. and trying to, as the Apostle Paul shared with us with the Holy Spirit, that we would imitate him mm. as he is imitating you. Mm. And Lord, what a what a person to imitate as oh, we yes. discern and look at Paul's life. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, we just thank you, and we just offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Thank everybody again, and God bless you, and we pray that you all have a, a blessed rest of the day. Take care.